Right now in Florida, former President Donald Trump is speaking to a gathering of the state's Republicans. Earlier, one of Trump's chief critics scolded the audience after being booed for his opposition to the GOP frontrunner. Yeah. Well, now it feels like home. Thank you all very much. Your anger against the truth is reprehensible. The problem is you want to shout down any voice that says anything different than what you want to hear. Uh, okay, let's discuss now with Vanity Fair special correspondent Molly John Fass and CNN senior political commentator Anna Navarro. Anna, um, it's not good when you're um, yelling at the audience and calling them reprehensible. <laughs> well, it's Chris Christie, right? So uh, from New Jersey, I think he's used to yelling at the audience and being yelled uh, at the audience. Look, Chris Christie is at single digits, what, 2 3% uh, at, at best. Uh, so, you know, obviously this is not about him winning the nomination, but I do think he's trying to cement his place in history maybe as being one of the Republicans that did speak sense and did speak sanity and did speak truth and did confront Donald Trump and the cult. And so, I, you know, there's a lot of things that are, might not be all that good that are going to be in his obituary. This is one of the good things that's going to be in his obituary. Uh, Republican nominee in 2024 is not going to be one of them. But Molly, it really sums things up in, in terms of where the Republican Party is right now. Asa Hutchinson had a similar uh, chilly reception earlier today as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Chris Christie is a hero by any stretch of the imagination. And I think that if Trump were to become president again, Chris Christie would desperately beg for a job in that cabinet, as we've seen before. I mean, remember, Trump gave Chris Christie COVID. So... I don't know. I don't actually give Chris Christie all that much credit. I think he's trying to get a television contributorship. I think he's trying to grow his brand. I think he knows that he's kind of irrelevant. He hasn't held an elected position in a long time. And he's really been on, until this run, he's really been on the wrong side of history. And Anna, I, I spoke with Vivek Ramaswamy in the previous hour and was asking about why he's going down in the polls. He is not the flash in the pan that he was, I guess, back in August or whatever it was over the summer. What has happened to Vivek Ramaswamy? I mean, he's blaming it on, well, there's super PACs and there's a hidden Ramaswamy, uh, I guess, segment of the voting, uh, you know, block out there in the Republican Party that'll, that'll support him. But he's just not where he was. He, he seems to be heading downward. You know, I, 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 first of all, I'm, I was surprised that he was a flash in the to begin with, right? Uh, I will tell you that a lot of the young crypto bros in my circle and my family were taken by him for a good five minutes. Uh, the women, interestingly enough, not as much or not at all, were quite repelled by, uh, by, by the way he behaves. He has no depth. He has no policy knowledge. He has no political experience. Um, He's, you know, he's one of many and he's not really standing out for anything that he is doing or saying. Yeah. And, and Molly, I have to ask you about this because there are all these protests happening um, across the world today, uh, protesting what's taking place uh, in, in the war between uh, Israel and Hamas, co people calling for a ceasefire, uh, supporting the Palestinians. What do you make of this polling that shows that a majority of Democrats uh, want President Biden uh, to lean toward neither side. And do you think that um, he's running the risk of, of having some, perhaps in the Arab American community, uh, vote against him in places, in important places like Michigan because of his stance on Israel? This is a really, really tough and incredibly heartbreaking and uh, really soul crushing uh, uh, conflict in the Middle East. And I think that um, this is going to have to, there's just going to have to be so much soul searching here. And it's quite, I think it's, it's ser it's quite serious. And I think that Democrats are going to have to, I mean, I just want to point out, like Democrats are dealing with actual real problems here and Republicans are creating problems for themselves. But for sure, I mean, there's got to be a lot of soul searching here especially, and I think that that's starting to happen, which is really um, important, but for sure, I mean, this is a real powder keg. 
But I do want to point out that that, you know, they are dealing with what's right in front of them versus Republicans like Mike Johnson, who wants to make Israel aid contingent on cutting the IRS, which will grow the deficit. Anna, what do you, you know, think? Uh, Jim, if I think on that, look, uh, yeah. you know, I, I think um, this is a very emotional issue uh, for Palestinians. Uh, it's a very emotional issue for, for many of us, but particularly if you descend from that region. Um, but, you know, I think Joe Biden has shown great moral clarity. And I also think he's not getting the credit that he deserves for every time that he speaks about anti-Semitism, he also condemns Islamophobia. He's uh, He and Blinken are out there trying to do diplomacy, trying to get some aid to Gaza, some humanitarian aid, trying to get um, the Rafah opening, uh, the, uh, crossing open so that some of the refugees and some of the injured and some of the other folks can get out. They have, uh, they have what? They've, they've apportioned a hundred million so far for humanitarian aid to Gaza. So this is, so I think this is something that the administration understands, is taking seriously. I think that for this administration, they've made it clear that Islamophobia is just as bad as anti-Semitism, that as an innocent Israeli life is as much of value as an innocent Palestinian life. And so I think people need to, when the emotion dies down, really take a look at what he is saying and what he is doing. And, and, and Molly, uh, there are some elections coming up on, on Tuesday. One of them, uh, I mean, in Virginia, across the state, uh, control of the state legislature could be um, up for grabs. Uh, and if it changes over to the Republicans, uh, solidly in the camp of the Republicans in Virginia, it's been said Governor Glenn Youngkin is going to pursue um, uh, tighter restrictions on abortion. How big is uh, what's going to take place on, on Tuesday? Uh, how, how, how much does that matter to the overall picture heading into 2024? Well, Tuesday is going to be, uh, it's going to be used as a bellwether. Will it be a bellwether? We don't know, but it certainly will be used that way. Right now, all the seats in the House of Delegates and all the seats in the Virginia State Senate are up, and that is a lot of seats. Um, and this, if the Republicans are able to capture both houses, that will mean that Governor Youngkin can do a 15 week abortion ban or he can do he'll have so much power. He'll be like Ron DeSantis in Florida. And I think it's worth realizing that we really are seeing Republican governors use their state legislature as a way to audition for presidential runs. So what we saw in Florida was DeSantis did a lot of stuff that he probably wouldn't have done had he not wanted to get a national spotlight. So right. we could see this if if Republicans flip the House of Delegates and the state Senate, we could see Glenn Youngkin do the same. All right. But that's Molly actually the one thing that happened to Ron DeSantis is that he had a Republican legislature that rubber stamped every crazy idea, uh, including getting rid of the Disney district, restrictions on abortion, restrictions on uh, history, restrictions on black, restrictions on so many different things that have ended up backfiring on him as he runs for president. So be yeah. careful what you uh, wish for, because you just may get it. And a legislature that rubber stamps every idea that comes out of your head might not be your best friend. That hasn't exactly helped DeSantis run for president. That's for sure. All right, Molly and Anna, thanks so much. Appreciate it.